Hi guys, and um, welcome to this post-convention PAX East update video for Dragon's Inquisition. I'll cover some things that I picked up from the panels that were held at the con, as well as some other things I've picked up over the last sort of 10 days or so. Although the main purpose of this update video is I want to talk about something that's quite important, something that will affect um, the game as a whole. It's come up over the last sort of 10 days or so, a lot of discussion around it. And that is the fact that it's been confirmed that there are no DLC companions for Inquisition period. There are no uh, so-called day one characters. There are no permanent additions to the party from the notable content. Now, this has been reported in various places, magazines, articles over the last sort of a couple of months, around a month or so. Um, starting from uh, a quote uh, in the latest official Xbox magazine from Mike Laidlaw uh, that explaining why there are no so-called extra party characters from DLC. The, because the characters are so deeply enmeshed in the system, as he calls it, um, the game, you can't just add characters on the fly. You can't just basically have extra characters that are there. They have to be present on some parts of them has to be present on the disc. The actual software itself has to be able to accept the extra content there. You can't just add such a huge chunk of content on the fly dynamically, um, which is also what it wants to be day one content. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole sort of pitched argument around day one, the ethics of day one content or anything, just to as a sort of a neutral update in this video. Um, so from that, we have an update from David Gator and also Alan Schumacher, another Bioware staff member on the Bioware forum. No, from David Gator, no DLC companions means none, period. Um, an example he gave was Shale in Origins. Um, now, if Shale hadn't had his content, additional content, everything else, it wouldn't have existed in the main game. Um, so if you hadn't gone and completed the quest, released it from the town, you wouldn't have been able to use it as a party member later on in the game, which would have been a shame, because um, it was a really good character. Um, now, one key distinction, again, is there are no permanent characters, as in you can't take a, meet a character in DLC and then take it on and basically select it or use it in quests or as a party member just for exploring later in the main game itself. So and this was also carried on via Alan Schumacher's post. Uh, also going into a lot more detail as to what Mike said from his quote in Xbox magazine, the main game has to support DLC content, um, which is also the reason why the size of patches and also other DLC content is so large. At the Basically the content for characters has to match up between the main game and the DLC for it to sync together and work effectively. So, and also his second point, which I'll just bring up here from Alan, um, from a question meaning there'll be no DLC full stop, that's not the case. The case is there are no extra permanent characters available in DLC, but also like Alan said there, it doesn't stop the DLC being similar to, in Dragon Age's case, uh, Mark of the Assassin with Talis. She was a temporary character added just for the course of DLC from so as long as you finish that DLC, Talis is now no longer available just because her story is contained within that content and not within the main game. Um, so obviously there's still potential for Inquisition to have its equivalent of Citadel, maybe, from Mass Effect 3, which would be good, um, which would be nice to see. Um, obviously that depends on whether they want to go that far in that amount of fan service, but that remains to be seen. Um, so in terms of the no extra permanent characters from DLC overall, um, it is a shame that they're not going to be adding more permanent members afterwards. Um, but I think since there are plenty of interesting uh, returning and also brand new characters in Inquisition, I don't think, from my perspective, that affects the game that much. Um, although, on the flip side of that, temp characters in DLC have to be done well. From, for me, they need to be, if they're self-contained characters, they need to have 
some lasting effect, some lasting impression um, for them to be able to be done well. But uh, no, I think overall that is somewhat a sensible decision because I think there's still plenty of both familiar and new faces to meet in the game. So, and I'll get on to more on that in a second. Um, going back to the main game overall, another point I picked up from uh, Mark Darrow on his Twitter feed from a question posted by a user um, asking about the time frame passing between the stories of Dragon's 2 and Inquisition. Um, as Mark says, there's outer narrative time. I'm assuming that means there's a period between the two and you pick up where it left off. I could be wrong. Um, so I'm assuming that means from the end of Strenuous 2 with Cassandra, beating with the Seekers, Liliana, etc. Landing Girls, it moves on from there straight into Inquisition. Um, now obviously another sort of dynamite that has to build up there, and hopefully we'll see more of it in the game, is the narrative between her, between Cassandra and Varric, who are in, according to Cameron Lee, a more professional relationship in Inquisition, which would be really good to see develop throughout the game. You also have seen bits of that, um, where they take sides at uh, Crestwood, during the Crestwood quest, which was shown at uh, PAX Prime last year, last summer. Um, and also travelling between, obviously, the Kirkwall area and where the game Inquisition begins, which obviously we don't know for sure where that is yet. So, moving on to the panels, um, continuing with the character theme, um, Alistair was mentioned, apparently has a significant role in Inquisition, which is good to know, obviously if he survived, and then moving on, um, his progression from Origins to 2, um, and also via the comics as well, another point that was made by, I think it might later in one of the, in one of the two panels, that relevant literature is important in Inquisition as it will give you a more rounded experience. Those who have seen have seen or read Alice's comics, Until We Sleep, Silent Grove, etc. Uh, the two novels, Inworld novels, Asunder and Mast Empire, which I'm still getting to the second one since it only turned up yesterday, which is a shame. Uh, Dawn of the Seeker anime for Cassandra as well, Cassandra's Origins, uh, seeing her progression as well, which is really good. And also, sticking with the novels, um, from the second panel, the Open World of Thedas, which they really went into detail about the creation of the world, the mechanics of the world, how in-depth the world is itself in terms of visually and how you can make your mark on it in, from the Inquisition. A area that was mentioned specifically and talked about quite in-depth was an area called Highlands, a snowy mountainous area. Not sure what region. I think it's shown very briefly in the Discover trailer, the snow area, snowy area with the camp. Um, this camp area, war camp, is apparently owned by Red Templars, who also have a behemoth, behemoth, whichever boss battle there that also takes place, um, which is a key boss level fight. Um, sticking from the character theme. A major character from the Masked Empire novel is present in the area, whether they're present in this questline or not. Um, but they are present here. Who that is, I'm not quite sure. And uh, as I said, I'm not really in a position to speculate. It may be Briala, who is Celine's sort of right-hand woman, effectively, assistant. Um, but obviously, I haven't read the novel fully yet, so that may change. And also, another thing that was mentioned confirmed there is a major character from Asunder as well, elsewhere in the game. So, as well as the Royal Inquisitor yourself and the nine companions, there are also characters from the novels that appear in the game as well. So it's really nice they're bringing all of the worlds together, because um, obviously the major fight in Inquisition is everybody is fighting against this Demon, Infestation, Dark Swan, Assault, etc. Fate uh, that you have to basically pull everybody together to fight against. And apart from that, so that basically covers the characters. The point, main point being that yes, there will be no more added by DLC, but I think there's plenty there anyway to stick with. And 
not just having the variety of characters, also having characters that can lend their skills not just to combat but also exploration as well. Um, using abilities, non combat abilities in exploration was also a key point that was mentioned several times, <coughs> excuse me, by the members of the panel. Um, stealth and traps were mentioned, um, which leads me to believe there may be, be puzzles in caves, etc., which would be really good. Um, adds another level, level of interesting rather than to caves, etc., treasure hunting, item hunting, that sort of thing. Instead of just being able to walk in, here's an area, here's some items, you can also have an element of challenge that way. Also, having, instead of just having an area with some enemies in it. Um, in terms of enemies, in terms of combat, um, party combat is a lot more intelligent now. You can use choke points effectively, so you can position a warrior, mages, to <coughs> both magically and obviously combat abilities to funnel enemies and deal with them that way. Uh, tactical camera to see the environment as well. Some enemies may appear extras from other sort of areas. Going back to example in the Highlands with the war camp, it's not just a like a selection of tents, right? It's a, meant to be a lot bigger than that, so you will have a lot more sort of pitched battles that way. 